Hey there, happy Wellness Wednesday. So it's Sherry, your therapist that practices here in Jasper, Alabama in in-person in, in sessions and then all over the state of Alabama as a real life therapist. So I'm really excited about today's topic. It is, is your relationship picker broken? Um, are you one of those people that when you tell your friends that you've met someone new, they immediately roll their eyes and groan? Are you one of those people that you seem to date the same person over and over again in a different body? Are you one of those people that have been so traumatized and scarred by how your relationships have ended that you just don't even want to date anymore? Um, do you say things like, there's no good men left out there, or all women are crazy? And if this describes you, today's video is for you. I hope to leave you with some hope that this situation can change for you. Um, I love this topic because it's one of those that kind of treads the line, if there really is a line, between therapy and professional development. And so I'm proud to stand here in front of you today and talk about this topic with the voice of personal experience and education. All right, so let's get to it. So how do pickers actually get broken? So this is something that um, is good to be aware of. Uh, so pickers are actually started during formative years. So formative years are from ages 2 to 10 um, in all of us. And so the way that I kind of describe this to my patients is think of a computer. So like a, a desktop computer. It comes in the mail. We open it up. The desktop computer itself, like the monitor, the hard drive, the mouse, the keyboard, all of that is kind of um, like uh, genetics. Like those things are kind of done. And so we have to decide what version of Word are we going to put on there, which Internet Explorer. Those are the things that are laid down in formative years. So it's during our formative years that we learn things about like our culture, um, our language, like uh, what does a man do when a man is angry? What does a woman do when a woman is angry? What relationships look like? Like all of that stuff that we kind of call culture that's when it's laid down during formative years. And so, um, it kind of in the middle of formative years, Dr. John Money says that our love map and our arousal templates are also being formed. And so these are made from experiences that are not really sexual experiences, just experiences that we kind of have and our idea of what um, the idealized lover, what they look like, like what um, kinds of uh, behaviors that kind of go into that, all of that is laid down like kind of in the middle of the formative years. So at puberty, we kind of see all of this stuff kind of come into action. So one of the first questions that I ask any of my patients that come to me with relationship issues is, tell me what was going on during your formative years. And so situations that can negatively impact like your love map and your arousal template that happen during those critical times in your formative years are situations like um, domestic violence. If a child was around domestic violence, they get some ideas that find their way into their love map and arousal template and they can come out later. Um, things that uh, are produced in a, a child that is around domestic violence a lot, um, it can vary from person to person, but a lot of times it's um, being comfortable with tension and chaos. And so we might say that we don't like those things but when we're around them all the time because we're a child and we don't have a choice in whether or not to get away from those things, we become comfortable with the uncomfortable, if that makes any sense. Um, so 
children that um, are around domestic violence, lots of times they grow up into adults that are much better at figuring out what the other people around them are feeling and what they need rather than what they need themselves because when they were children during those critical formative years, their survival or they're having their best day that they could have depended a lot on them being able to look at the adults around them that were responsible for their care and anticipate their needs and kind of mitigate any kind of um, blow-ups that might happen. So um, for people that grow up in chaos during their formative years, stability and routine can feel very boring. And this can be difficult for people to spot about themselves or even to admit but when you see somebody that kind of finds themselves in chaotic um, relationships over and over again, this is the kind of stuff that I look for. Um, if a child grows up with a lot of tension, again, it's not comfortable, but it begins to feel familiar to that child. So if we see that again in relationships over and over, that's kind of what I'll uh, start looking for. So, you know, children are dependent upon the adults around them to take care of them. And so if children are not being adequately taken care of, they have to learn to trust untrustworthy people. So that can carry on again into our adult relationships. Um, if a child uh, grows up like kind of caretaking um, of adult feelings, like uh, in any way, you can kind of use your imagination. Like if that child's like kind of the mediator or, you know, dad, that's going to be okay or mom, that's going to be okay. Um, and they kind of grow up and that becomes like their purpose and a part of like what their identity is built around. Then lots of times you'll see that person as an adult confusing pity with love because all that just kind of got messed up in their minds. Um, and of course, childhood sexual abuse can absolutely hijack the arousal template and the love map. And I'm not going to go into detail, you know, on that uh, right now, but you can just imagine how things that shouldn't be there because they were forced there during the abuse, you find them there later in adult relationships and they just don't belong. And so it's hard to kind of figure all of that out. And so trauma you know, trauma is my jam. It's what I like. It's what I do. And so these are things that I talk about every day in this office, and I get to see people get better. Um, let's see. Emotional abuse. That finds its way into um, how we choose uh, relationships. You know, how many of us have friends, and we think that that friend is just fantastic. You know, they've got a lot of things going for them, and then you see them with this loser over and over again, and you're like, what has happened? And it's because they have some negative cognitions that were the result of some of this uh, childhood trauma stuff, and those negative cognitions are operational in their life even if they don't realize it. Um, they have ideas like, um, I don't deserve love, I'm flawed, I'm unworthy, um, I can't trust people, um, let's see, uh, intimacy is dangerous, and when I say intimacy, I'm talking about being open and genuine and vulnerable on purpose with another person to deepen that relationship. Lots of people can't do that, and so um, all of this is the result of that those childhood experiences working their way into uh, their love map and arousal template. And you're like, okay, Sherry, <laughs> I've heard all this bad news. Now, what can I do about it? So in the description of this video, I have a link to Dr. Rob Weiss. He gives you a step-by-step -step plan about how you can use your friends to kind of help you choose better. Um, so that's the link in the comments. And so if you don't have a group of friends or if you want to work on this stuff um, yourself with a therapist, I would love to do EMDR with you. Like what we do is those negative cognitions, I can help you identify them and we can do EMDR to reprocess the memories that reinforce that idea and you will see improvement all over your life. And so that's why, you know, I love talking about stuff like this 
there's kind of a thin line between professional development and therapy because if we make bad decisions with our relationship choices in romance, then we absolutely do it at work. We do it everywhere because we've got a broken picker, as some of us say here in the South. And so um, I hope that this explanation about you know, how people choose certain relationships. I hope that that's helpful to you. And if you live in the state of Alabama and you need a therapist or you want to work on some of this stuff, I would love to work with you on this. And if you have any ideas about future Wellness Wednesday sessions, you can feel free to comment below this or you can reach out and private message me. I love doing videos that people have requested. So I hope y'all have a great Wellness Wednesday. I'll see you next week.